telling your uh, cumulonimbus from your stratus and why it matters. Um, a bit of a stupid title, sorry about that. Um, essentially, what I'm going to do is talk about clouds, what can actually make the cloud a cloud and why they're different. Then I'm going to go through a couple of different clouds and benchmark them and say which ones we should try to use and improve the numbers. So, my name is Alex McFadden. Uh, I'm CTO of a company called Demotics. Uh, I've been a Drupal uh, for five years and 20 weeks, according to Drupal.org. Um, and I'll be a really quick introduction about Demotics, just because I think they're quite cool. And the frame is wire. So, Demotics is a community powered views wire. Um, I think Reuters are AP, but instead of having staffers around the world, we have photographers uh, as part of our community. We launched in 2009. I'll go whiz through this. To the world's media, we offer a view from the street because we have people all over the place. Um, we can get a local view, we can get an access place to where people can't. Um, we're on the ground within seconds, so that's the Oslo bomb going on. Um, and we can be available in places that other people can't. To our users, uh, we split any royalties we make 50 50 with the people upload the pictures. We have sales teams around the world, resales networks, and that kind of stuff. We've got deals with news organizations, so we've been on the front pages of all sorts of newspapers. Um, and we sell the global sales network. This is way out of date now. We've got over a million and a half images um, in our archive. Resellers will be on etc. etc. We use open source. Um, we actually don't use MySQL anymore. We use MariaDB. So I try and get anyone in the organisation to use MySQL to use open source as much as possible. Sometimes it's a bit of a fight. Sometimes I win. Sometimes I lose. Outlook being the main thing. We believe in helping the community, um, both our photographers and the wider photography community, and obviously the open source community, so we want to give back where we can. So that's demotics in Egypt. Um, <laughs> that's demotics in my 30 seconds. So, cloud is just nothing but a buzzword, it's more or less useless. Uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, cloud, is, uh, cloud computing refers to the delivery of computing and storage capacity as a service to help the community and end recipient. I mean, more or less nothing. Um, as a Drupal developer, what it actually means for us is an easy way to spin up the EPS nice and quickly, and potentially spin it down again. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can have unlimited storage, unlimited storage attached to that, and sometimes a CDN as well, if you like. So, first thing I'll say is a public health announcement. If you can pay for hosting to be someone else's problem, do it. Because it's so much easier. Chances are you're a Drupal developer, not a systems administrator. You don't want to be the poor person who's woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning because something's gone wrong. If you can pay for that to be someone else's problem, do. Sometimes you can't. Um, either because you tried to pay for it to be someone else's problem and it's failed, and so now you've got people shouting at you saying you've got to do it. Sometimes your site's complex. Uh, we, for example, have over 600 gigabytes of files in our files folder. Um, a lot of standard hosting companies won't touch that with files um, So we had to build our own solution. You also, there may be an internal policy, you might be dealing with sensitive data or something like that, or you may just be a control freak. But, to quote Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. And if you don't want responsibility, pay for someone else to have that responsibility. So, when you're picking a cloud provider, there's a couple of key things you need to think about. The first one is what I call a slice ratio. There may be a technical term for it, but I don't know. This is what I call it. When cloud hosting providers offer you cloud hosting, they normally offer you nodes, or they offer you servers of certain sizes. Chances are that's not a physical machine. Chances are that's a small slice of a large physical machine. And they'll slice up their machines in different ways. And different hosting cloud providers will do that in different ways. So they will say, you have a large instance. Smaller. Some of them will say you have five nodes, which may mean you have five CPU cores, or it may mean five gigabytes of RAM, or it may mean something completely different. Every single cloud hosting provider does it in a different way. Hooray, which makes checking between them really easy. Some let you add on resources. So if you, for instance, know that your application is really CPU intensive, you want to add loads and loads of CPU cores to your to each of your web servers. Some of them let you do it, some of them don't. Um, and again, yeah, same the idea if you want to build a file server. If you're on Amazon, that can be quite difficult because you need to buy a very, very large instance in order to have a lot of disk space to it. The other thing you think about is disk I.O. It's one of the major problems in the cloud is that a lot of the times the disks that you're accessing actually aren't from the physical machines where your virtual host is running. Uh, they'll be either on a SAN or some other place further down the network, which means you have a lot slower latency between those connections, which is bad. 
other things to consider. More servers in a lot of cases is more problems. If you're the poor person who's going to be administering these things, if you've got 400 servers, it can become a real pain in the neck to make sure they're all updated security-wise, making sure they're not being hacked and that kind of stuff. Um, and the other one is if you're going with a cloud host provider, do they offer support? Um, a lot of them don't, or a lot, at least certainly a lot of them don't out of the box, and you have to pay for that, and it's an extra. And if you do are paying for it, what about support at 3 o'clock in the morning? You know, during business hours, yeah, of course, it's going to be fine. But 3 o'clock in the morning, which is when your server will explode. Um, uh, do they give you support then? But what about on Christmas Day? Things like that. It's worth considering, it's worth checking, and worth asking your cloud host on the way if they can be able to do it. That's it. You also need to worry about bad neighbours and overselling. So, you know, if Reddit moves in next door, all of a sudden your phone is going to drop off a cliff. Um, or if the person on the same server as you, or on the same hypervisor as you, starts encoding the whole of YouTube, again, your performance is going to drop off a cliff. So all of this is basically saying our providers are not the same. Just because they use the word cloud and what they're offering you doesn't mean that they're doing the same thing. So how do you pick one? Um, it's difficult. Because they all have very nice marketing information, and they tell you they'll give you all sorts of promises. Um, there's a really handy website, cloudarmy.com. Um, some of the benchmarks are a bit out of date, but what they've basically done is what I've done, <coughs> which is they will uh, they pull you know uh, instances of various of these cloud hosting providers, and then run benchmarks on them, uh, I/O testing, or spun up basic databases and run those tests, and then they've aggregated those into general metrics. So the one you can see here at the bottom is the web performance metric. There's almost nothing more is better. Um, and these are ones from the UK. Uh, and on this list we have Amazon, we have uh, Data, we have uh, Rackspace, and a few others. Um, it's worth pointing out that's Amazon. So what to do? So you try before you buy. Many of these hosting providers will give you a free day, week, or uh, in Microsoft Azure's case, 90 days, which is insane. Um, and so get the free trial, put your site on it, and hammer it and see what happens. See if you, see if IO becomes a problem, see if CPU becomes a problem, and monitor what's happening. And that's the best, the single, and the only way to work out how well your application will work tonight is to put your application on the host and test it. Test it, test it, test it. And when I say test it, I don't mean run AB or Siege. AB and Siege are great at testing how fast Varnish can serve from memory. Or well, they're great at testing how fast anything can serve from memory. You're hitting one URL again and again and again and again and again and again. It's not going to tell you anything. It's going to tell you how fast your network is and how fast your RAM is. If you really want to understand how your application is going to perform, use something like HTTP Perf or JMeter. And what these tools allow you to do is load in your Apache logs into the tools, and it will then replay those against the server. So you can use your real, actual use of your site in order to be able to test your other site. And then one is the results, because obviously if you're just testing it to see if it falls over, that's not going to tell you a lot. Moonin and Cacti are popular tools, and New Relic as well, because they're a license for it. It's invaluable. So, what I did was um, I decided that I was going to test the big three clouds. Um, obviously Amazon, Rackspace, Microsoft Azure, um, which surprises a lot of people yet that do offer cloud hosting, and you can run Linux on it. And also the host that we use, which is called Denso. So to do this, um, I first thought about installing our site. Our site, as I said, is huge, 600 gig of files and all that kind of stuff. I'm not copying that around the way, it would take forever. So instead, I decided to use um, the popular distribution uh, Kickstarter, which for those who don't know is a commerce uh, platform, and it's, yeah, it's an e-commerce site, and their Kickstarter thing is a fully made site that looks very, very pretty. So yeah, it's a full, it's a full Drupal site with products and search and all that kind of good stuff. Fully working site. <laughs> so I basically wrote a very simple public script, which is on GitHub, which you can then spin up uh, stock uh, MySQL, stock Apache, <coughs> HP, and that's it. I didn't do any configuration, I didn't do anything else, and tried to optimize and do the cloud and that's it. I then used um, Drush in order to build up uh, the Kickstarter instance. And then I've attacked it with uh, Blazing. So 
Blaze Meter is a cloud hosting service that allows you to run JMeter scripts in the cloud and fire it against individual websites. Um, they also have a Drupal module, which is really cool. So what you can do is install the Drupal module, and it will then set up authenticated users on that site, so that you can run both unauthenticated and authenticated users. Which again, if you have authenticated users on the site, gives you a much more accurate representation of how the sites are performed. They're also very nice because they gave me a free pro account in order to be able to do all this testing. So thank you very much for that. Also, if you sign up with them, you get access to New Relic as well for free. So all of this, all the testing we did here, all the drafting is because of the New Relic thing. So what, how the servers were built. So for my test, I produced a uh, provision service that was 4 gigabytes plus whatever you got for having the 4 gigabyte of RAM server. Um, I then used the Puppet install, which is that one there. I had a very small 20-line bash script, which I literally just fire IP address into it, but then go off download it, set it all up, install it, all that stuff. And that was it. And it took me, once the bash scripts and puppet scripts were written, about sort of 10, 15 minutes per host to completely spin up this new site. And if you like the sound of being able to do that kind of stuff, go, and have, go to the uh, Vagrant Crash Course, uh, which is 4.30, um, because we'll talk about puppet. So how do I test them? So I got 20 URLs, which I thought were more or less representative of, of the site. Uh, um, I then hit it with seven authenticated users and seven unauthenticated users for 10 minutes um, with a 160 second ramp up time using Blaze Meter. Again, you'll see their logo a lot through this as the game, this isn't for free. Um, and then I graphed it with New Relic. So, first up, ding ding, round one Amazon EC2. No free trial, which is annoying, but you pay by the hour, and so as you can spin these things up and down within an hour, you know, you're going to be paying 30p, 40p, something like that. I did, with, I did two with um, Amazon, for reasons you'll see shortly. So one is M1, which you get one core, you get almost a 4 gig of RAM and a bunch of disk. And M1 Large, which is, I also did the EBS Optimize, which I think is supposed to give you better disk I.O. <coughs> um, with that, you get two cores, even more RAM and even more disk. Bandwidth, support, and everyone right inside, they're bad, they're ugly. So that's 12,000 milliseconds down to 6,000 milliseconds. So between 12 and 6 seconds average response, which is awful. When we actually look at uh, what the server was doing, this is new relic reporting, by the way. You can see that basically it's all in PHP right here. Uh, and that's where all the time is coming through. It's using a heck of a lot of CPU. Um, it's a little bit of system stuff, but it's all mostly users, so we're not having any IO issues. There's no IO weight. Um, and it's using about half of them. Okay, so that was, that was Amazon One, uh, Amazon Medium, and that was pretty awful. So I thought, right, okay, let's. Crank it up a bit, let's give it a bit more RAM, a bit more CPU, and make it optimized. No, it's still rubbish. Um, seven, top number is 7,400, bottom number is 6,800. So you're still looking at about seven seconds per page or average. Um, as you'd expect, because it's got more resources, you're not seeing any of the spikes that we saw before, because it's just a plateau. Um, it's pretty consistent, again, it's all PHP. And again, it's a bit not much memory used because it's got absolutely tons of it. Um, and CPU and everything, plus the last part. So, that was Amazon. Next round, rack space. Again, no free trial. But again, paid by the hour, so it's not the end of the world. Um, with them, I only did one because I didn't need to, and the numbers are much better as you'll see. Four gigabytes, you get quad core, you get four gigs of RAM, and you get some disk, and with support. Here, come on, that's not better than this. So, 3,000 to 2,225. So, worlds apart from what Amazon were able to do. As you'd expect, once the cache gets built, it's then much more responsive. Um, again, here, it's nice and steady. Again, all of the PHP as we'd expect, it's like we saw from Amazon. It's using less than half the RAM, and it's losing a heck of a lot less CPU to so essentially be ready. Next one, Microsoft Azure. They give you 90, as I said at the beginning, they give you 90 days for free. And it's 90 days of a lot of resources. So even if you know you just want to play around, I recommend you go and sign up because it's it's free. Um, I've done two here uh, just to get a nice test. Um, we've done uh, the medium and the large. Medium, four gigs basically is the large gig seven. You get more CPUs than we do with Amazon. Um, they have a really smart and clever interface for the actual hosting element of it. And again, I'm um, 
So how did it perform? First one, between 6,000, the top number, and 1,500, so pretty well. Um, and so we're trending down is good. Again, spikes as you'd expect because it's the smaller of the two. Um, again, all CPU and, uh, and PHP. Same again. There we can see a little bit of I.O. weight. Could be because there was another use in all the other servers uh, and the same hypervisor was doing something particularly I.O. intensive. Uh, and this is a problem that you'll have when you're sharing hardware with other people. Big one. This is even better. So that's 1,500, so that's one and a half seconds, to 1,200, two seconds. That's really nice. I mean, it looks as though there's a lot of scary variation because there's numbers close together. Um, so that's quick. So we're under, we're under a second and a half for our average page here. And as you'd expect, it's all close to the level of the state. And then finally, um, Pesa, which is the hosting company that we use. Um, and they're, they're very friendly, so if you want a free server, if you can talk to them for a bit to negotiate to get a free server for a bit to test. Um, th with this one, I've actually gone even lower, so I've gone 2 gig and 4 gig, all the others were 4 and 7. So 2 gig, you get 4 cores, 2 gig works around some disk and a whole tranche of transfer. 4 gig, you get 8 cores, 4 gigs around, and uh, 3 gig to transfer. So first off, the 2 gig. Um, as you can see here, it's all nice and low numbers. That's 4,000 at the top, and that's 1,800 at the bottom. <coughs> Those sorts of graphs as you'd expect. Again, so here we do have a little bit of stolen and I.O. weight. Um, so I.O. weight is obviously when someone else, when the CPU is waiting for the disk to do something useful. And stolen means that there's another uh, user on that server that's doing something that's using that CPU that you would otherwise want to use. Um, Physical memory, because it's only a 2 gig server, you can see we've got very close and it's had to do some swap um, to be able to host, uh, to be able to serve at that speed. Then uh, the 4 gig version, um, again the numbers are smaller, so it's 3000 at the top and 2100 at the bottom. Um, and again, as you can expect, it's going to be nice and low. Here, we, I don't know why we have a little bit of there, that's interesting. Um, but again, it's all PHP. Uh, here, there's a little bit of stolen again. So obviously there's someone else doing something interesting on the server, and there's apparently I.O. I can't see it. Um, and yeah, and that's them. So then what I've done, and this is the, the, the big show-off bit at the end, is basically graph. This is a millisecond time response time on average versus cost per month. So ideally, you want to be as close to this side as possible and as far away from that side as possible. These top two, that one and that one are Amazon. So this kind of tells us that you should really be able to use this stuff on Amazon. I'm, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. This is all completely unoptimized, but just straight out of the box, if you just set up an instance and stick your Drupal site on it, it's going to suck. Don't do it. These ones down here uh, is where it gets more interesting. So this one is DeliServe, which is my hosting company. That's the 2 gig DeliServe instance. That is the 4 gig uh, Azure instance. That is the 4 gig data server instance. That is the 4 gig rack space instance. Oops. And that is the uh, Azure Large. So, I mean, Azure Large is obviously the best former there that you're paying for it. Um, and data server is the cheapest and, and most cheap. Shameless affiliate link. Um, <laughs> we host with them and also they turned out to be the fastest. Um, but it's really easy to, if you don't believe me, which is fine. Uh, and it does sound a bit one-sided that I'm saying, hooray for the hosting company that we use, and here's a link to sign up to them. It's not an advert, I promise it just happens that way. But it's really easy to repeat, like I said. Once the scripts are written, it's 15 minutes per service to set it up and test it. So do it, it's easy. Um, I can go into more detail about the scripts if anyone's interested in that. I can show you New Relic or any other bits that anyone's interested in. That's, that's it. Questions? Just talking to a guy down there from Pillar, and they base their service on uh, Amazon, so there's nothing wrong with their service sucks. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't. I mean, because at the end of the day, Amazon aren't, they're a very large company, they're not stupid. With the right optimizations, I'm sure you can make it fly. But my point is, is that yeah. out of the box, it sucks. Well, my point was that, you know, again, a bit more sensible is, is to use that because of something that Pillar would do, is it because Amazon would look at them and say they were working less. I don't know. I'm assuming it's probably a combination of the two things. Um, the, 
I think they have a private cloud as opposed to being on the public, um, which may make a difference. Um, I'm not sure. And they're probably doing all sorts of clever optimizations behind the scenes that I'm not doing. Like I said, this is, as I can show you here, this is the this is the puppet script. It literally just installs stop everything and sets you going. And that's all they did. That and then ran this build script, which literally installs puppet, pulls down the script, installs it, and all they did. And that's all I did, and then I hammered the hell out of it. 